Some black people have been so heavily demoralized by the white society's perpetual negative distortions of our racial group that many find it easier to continue believing the fraudulent worst about ourselves than to accept the truth that the white society falsely negatively distorts our narratives and our image. They do this because when the oppressed is made self-loathing and demoralized, we are much more easier to control. Sometimes it's easier to fool people than it is to show them that they've been fooled. Nonetheless, I'm still going to plant these seeds of truth because we must never underestimate the power of planting liberating mental seeds into fertile minds. A secret weapon of mass destruction that, that most people are totally clueless of is called information warfare. Information warfare is an offensive psychological warfare tactic wherein which false information is systematically fed into the minds of targeted populations without their awareness. More specifically, false information that are designed to make the targeted population think and behave in ways that are against their own self-interest and instead in ways serving the interests of those conducting the information warfare. Information warfare is very effective because most people function based upon the information they're given. Therefore, those who control the information that a targeted population receives are able to control what they believe and how they function. Information warfare shapes the minds of target audience according to the will of their enemies. Throughout history, this information propaganda have often been used to destabilize targeted populations. It's a secret weapon of mass destruction that all black people must learn because we are the greatest victims of it. Black people are in fact the unknowing victims of the most elaborately deployed information warfare in world history. Telling the truth is treasonous now that liars rule the world. Nonetheless, those who know the truth must teach African proverb. White oppressive forces exploits their monopoly over information that black people receives by systematically feeding false information into the collective minds of black people that makes us think and behave in ways that are against our own self-interest and instead in ways that serve the interests of the white society. Case, point, and proof. To instill the belief that black people are, in, are inherently inferior to whites within the subconscious minds of black people, which in fact makes us more compliant with white dominance over our lives, the white society miseducates black people to believe that Africans were illiterate and uncivilized before the Europeans invaded, and that therefore we have no significant history that predates the Europeans' invasion of Africa. This is done to condition us to perceive ourselves through a false, inherent, inferior identity that makes us accept our subordinate status within the white dominant society. It also manipulates black people to believe that slavery has benefited us. It in fact causes many black people to literally feel grateful to the white society for their brutal enslavement and an invasion of our ancestors. Because we've been made to perceive it as having been more of a rescue mission that took us away from the backwardsness of Africa. This information warfare um, tactic literally makes millions of black people feel indebted to the white society when we should more appropriately be resenting the white society. However, the narrative that Africans were illiterate and uncivilized before the Europeans invaded is totally untrue. The hidden reality is that the Africans introduced science, writing, math, and philosophy to, Europe, to Europeans. The world's oldest university, library, manuscript, encyclopedia, human prosthetic, mathematical tools, medical journals are all located in Africa. Africans invented the wheel paper, the calendar, the concept of 24 hours in a day. Africans are the first to build in stone and the first to smelt metal. The world's largest wall ever built is not the Great Wall of China. 
It's actually the Great Well of Benin located in Nigeria. It's four times longer than the Great Wall of China. And it's recognized by the Guinness Book of Records as being the largest earthworks in the world carried out prior to the mechanical era. The narrative that Africans were illiterate and uncivilized before the Europeans invaded is totally untrue. It's information warfare. Furthermore, long before the Europeans invaded Africa, it was we Africans when we call ourselves Moors that civilized Europe. Africans introduced hygienic practices such as shaving, toothpaste, perfume, fragrance or deodorants, and even introduced a daily bath to Europeans. Queen Isabella of Spain bragged that she had only bathed twice in her whole lifetime. Queen Elizabeth I of London claimed that she was the cleanest woman in all of Europe for reportedly bathing once a year. This horrible non-bathing hygiene practice among Europeans ended only after being civilized by Africans. These facts are deliberately omitted from our history books, movies, and TV shows because they refute the myth of white racial superiority over black people. Because the great monumental buildings, achievements of Africa's ancient Egypt totally refutes the myth that black people were illiterate and uncivilized, white historians created the falsehood that Africa's ancient Egyptians were ridiculously Europeans. White propagandists also created the term Middle East to make it appear that Africa's ancient Egypt was not in Africa. It's all part of their information warfare. Here are the facts. All scientific evidence proves that, Africa, that, um, that the Africa's ancient Egyptians were in fact Africans. The geographical location of Egypt is in Africa. Radiocarbon date testings have scientifically proved that the ancient kingdom was built by Africans thousands of years before the first Europeans and Greeks arrived there during the seventh century. Hair sample testings, melanin concentrating skin testings, bone densities, DNA genetic testings have all scientifically proven that Africa's ancient Egyptians were in fact Africans. More specifically, DNA analysis conducted from 2012 to 2013 on the mummies of Pharaoh Tutankhamun, Ramsey IV, Ramsey III, Ramsey IV, and many other by DNA tribes, an American company which specializes in conducting DNA tests, have scientifically proven that Africa's ancient Egyptians were in fact Africans. Their DNA matches current day sub-Saharan Africans. More specifically, their DNA testing proved that they belong to the human Y chromosome group E1B1A. This is the Y chromosome group of black Saharan, sub-Saharan Africans who not, oh, now speaks the Niger-Congo languages. These results were published in DNA Tribe Digest on February 2013. The history we've been taught has been whitewashed with disinformation designed to make Caucasians appear more significant and relevant through history than they truly were, while making we Africans appear less significant throughout history than we truly were. It's a lie. The nefarious practice also includes falsely giving white people credit for most inventions that were actually made by black people. Case, point, and proof. The white society miseducates us by teaching us that Thomas Edison is responsible for lighting up the world. However, the true facts are that after Edison patterned his light bulbs, no companies purchased it nor mass produced it. This is because it was deemed not efficient enough for mass production. It lit very dimly and only lasts a few minutes. The inventor whose light bulb was purchased, mass produced, and it was spread around the world was in fact invented by an African-American named Louis Latimer. He sold a patent to the U.S. Electric Company in 1881. He was also dispatched around the world to oversee its installation. Therefore, the hidden truth is that it was a black man, an African, who lit up the entire world. But this is not the fact we are functioning by.
Before, furthermore, Lewis Latimer literally wrote the book on electric lighting, and he also holds the patent for the first electrical lamp. He's also the man that drew up the pattern for the uh, schematics designs for Graham Bell's telephone. The history books of the white society are filled with these whitewashed discrepancies that intensely falsely gives white people credit for most inventions and achievements actually made by black people. As a result of this fact, the majority of people now function based upon their perceptions that most inventions that have revolutionized the world were made by Caucasians. Moreover, most believe that black people are the leeches of society that haven't invented much throughout history. It's in fact perceived that black people are moving forward into the future, riding the coattails of the white society. According to white social scientists, truth is not important. What's only important is what's perceived as true. That's where true power lies. Because the society functions based upon its perceptions of what's true rather than what actually is true. Therefore, creating the perception that most revolutionizing inventions comes from the minds of Caucasians greatly empowers them. It greatly sustains false assumptions within the society that aids Caucasians in maintaining their social dominance over black people. Your perception of reality is a white deception. The true reality is the exact opposite from what they've manipulated millions to believe. The hidden truth is that in spite of cultural traumas wrought by the injustices of white racism and slavery. Most inventions that have revolutionized the world were either invented by black people or were directly inspired by earlier inventions by black people. This is the hidden reality. Without black people, uh, there would exist no internet, no cell phones. We wouldn't have cameras on our cell phones or microphones on our cell phones. We wouldn't have the accurate weather forecasting system. We wouldn't have the cataract laser removal scope. There would be no emails, no GPS, no hearing aids, no touch tone phones, no caller ID, no home security surveillance system, no home game cartridges, no motorized vehicles, no steam engines, no traffic lights, no working light bulbs, no elevators, therefore no skyscrapers. There'd be no air conditioning, no modern color PC, no 3D movies, no central heating, no refrigerators, no helicopters, no washing machines, no lawnmowers, no dryers, no refrigerated trunks, no blood banks, no fiber optics, no nanotechnology, no female sanitary pads, no bathroom tissue holders, no pencil sharpeners, no lawnmowers, etc., etc. Black people have in fact in which nearly every aspect of the lives of every person on this planet through our many inventions. What a well-packaged web of lies has been sold gradually to the masses over generations, the truth will seem utterly ridiculous and its speaker will sound like a raving lunatic. I'm telling you the truth. Research it for yourself. The truth of the matter is that white people invented the pattern office and have always used it to steal the intellectual property right from black people. In order for a black inventor to get their inventions mass produced, they have to go before white companies. These companies acquire the rights to these inventions, and then they place white faces in front of the technology. This scenario literally allows the white society to continue exploiting the intellectual genius minds of black people while maintaining the illusion and the appearance that most inventions are coming from the great minds of white people. Here's a relevant historical fact. After slavery was abolished in the US in 1865, following it between the years of 1870 to 1940, African-Americans submitted 726 invention patterns to the US Patent Office. This was not only extraordinary so closely following slavery while still dealing with the unresolved traumas of slavery and still being wrought by the injustices of white racism, but even more amazing, even more so, because those numbers by, by the, the, really, the recently enslaved Africans more than doubled the number of inventions submitted by Caucasians. 
This scenario of black people outpacing Caucasians and making inventions has never changed. It's merely concealed from the public through the white society's monopoly over information. Furthermore, in spite of receiving no reparation and being constantly plagued by the evils of white racism, African Americans built many of our own self-efficient cities across the nation. Those, uh, those um, black built cities often exceeded the neighboring white cities. This resulted in many white mobs becoming jealous and rioting and destroying those black cities. Black segregated schools made a significant difference in black illiteracy, which was 30% in 1919. It had dropped to less than 7% by 1955. Black illiteracy had almost dis disappeared in the North, and in some areas, black illiteracy was less than white illiteracy. This was the case in New York. White social scientists determined that if left unimpeded, that the trajectory of the black population could elapse and erode the white society's social dominance over black people. To prevent this erosion, they deployed a perception management system that keeps black people believing the fraudulent worse and fraudulent lesser about ourselves. Perception management is a propaganda technique that involves altering the public perception of reality to suit the objective of the dominant culture. It's an essential part of modern information warfare. Because the white society controls all of our narratives, they negatively distorts them, and in doing so, they've conditioned millions of us to perceive ourselves through a false inherent inferior identity that aids the white society in maintaining their social dominance over black people. To restate this more bluntly, it's a, an ethical perception management system that manipulates black people to perceive ourselves through a false and inherent inferior identity that aids the white society in maintaining their social dominance over our entire lives. White social scientists describe this nefarious practice as merely instilling a value system into the collective minds of the black population that makes it adhere to the authority and existing infrastructure of the white dominant culture. The oppressor's depiction of the oppressed is never a true one. This has been a consistent fact throughout history. It's always negatively distorted to serve the oppressor's nefarious agendas. As I said, this has remained a consistent fact throughout history and is especially still true now in regard to black people living under white dominance. In the U.S., the largest benefactors of affirmative actions are white women. The largest benefactor of welfare and the group that commits most crimes, violent crimes, are white people. It's not black people. Research these facts for yourself. The white society sits upon a throne of white exalting, black denigrating lies. The practice is known as a Orwellian propaganda. Orwellian propaganda are societal conditions created and sustained by misinformation, distortion of fact, denial of truth, and the manipulation of the past to falsely exalt Caucasians. The premise behind Orwellian propaganda is that truth is not important. What's only important is what's perceived as true. People function based upon their perceptions of what's true rather than what actually is true. Therefore, white propaganda constantly feeds false, white exalting and black marginalizing narratives into the society to create a societal perception that whites are inherently superior to blacks. Doing so creates false assumptions within society that aids and maintain the white society's social dominance over black people. As I said before, some black people have been so heavily demoralized by this perception management system that they literally find it easier to continue believing the fraudulent and worst about themselves than to accept the fact that they're being lied to about themselves. Sometimes it's often easier to fool people than it is to show them that they've been fooled. Those black people that insist that they've confirmed their negative assessments about our racial group based upon their own individual experiences are delusional. Absolutely delusional because it's not humanly possible 
to assess the collective state of millions of people based upon anyone's individual experiences, not humanly possible. Those, those false negative perceptions about our racial group were actually deliberately ingrained into our collective minds by the white society, white oppressive forces that exclusively writes all of our narratives and our statistics and they control our media images. They control, they own our interpretation of ourselves and they keep us believing the frauds and worst about ourselves. Black people, we must question our perception of reality when it's been exclusively controlled by history's proven most notoriously deceitful, most narcissistic, most racist people. Whenever such a group controls the perception of reality, they'll always distort it to falsely exalt themselves and to falsely marginalize us. It's the racist and narcissistic people they inherently are. It's the way they've always been. And it's the only way they know how to be. They have brainwashed many of us to forget who they truly are. They've literally given themselves an image makeover within the minds of black people. This is all possible because people are like computing. computers. Just give them certain information and you can persuade a an entire generation towards an applied objective. The white society has been inundated with propaganda for so many years where they convince us that we are our worst enemies and condition us to revere them. It's time to wake up to our reality. One love and peace.